aspect is I, I heard this morning that Dan Weber may be stepping away uh, from uh, from covering a USC. If that is true, I want to thank Dan uh, for the years that he has given uh, to the coverage of USC. I know he has a great love uh, for this program and this university and appreciate his professionalism throughout the years. He, he's done a great job. Um, I promised a personnel update uh, as we started camp. Uh, and, uh, and now that we have a very clear and transparent picture, so I'm going to give you uh, injuries, suspensions, opt-outs, so all of everything uh, from a personnel standpoint. Um, from an injury standpoint, uh, Jordan Iosefa uh, and Solomon Tulia Pupu will be um, having knee surgery uh, in, in um, uh, Solomon's is today. Uh, this will hold him out uh, from this abbreviated season. And Jordan uh, will uh, be having a knee surgery in the near future uh, to clean up uh, uh, his knee. Uh, and we will um, uh, will not see him uh, in this abbreviated season. As we know, Kyle Ford uh, had, had surgery over the summer. He will continue uh, to rehab. Uh, and Ethan Ray, uh, who has had knee surgery, continues to rehab from here. You will not see him at practice uh, initially. Uh, we'll see. Uh, how he progresses uh, in the future. And Elijah Winston is with us and still rehabbing off of an ankle surgery. Uh, you will not see him uh, in practice uh, as, as we start. Uh, Maneer McLean is currently on suspension from all team activities. Uh, and the opt-outs that we have, um, obviously, uh, Jay Tufeli opted out for the NFL. Uh, that still remains uh, the case. Uh, and uh, really don't see that um, changing um, right now. Elijah Barrett Tuckter uh, had opted out and as you, as you know he made he has rejoined us uh, to be a part of this football team which we are uh, uh, delighted with. Uh, he has been a part of our OTAs in the second half of this week uh, and uh, is entering camp today. And then those that have chosen to uh, not play this season but to forego this season and we'll be back with us in fall of 21 are Jake Lichtenstein, Frank Martin, and Bernard Shermer. So I hope that gives you a, a little bit better picture from a personnel standpoint. I appreciate your patience uh, um, as we got to camp. Uh, you know, it's an exciting time for our team. Uh, you know, going into practice one uh, of camp, a lot of people will thank just real fast. Thank you to the Pac-12 for you know, providing the Quidel testing that is up and running right now uh, that, that our kids and our staff are doing on a daily basis uh, now that we are in a contact mode. Um, and uh, thanks for USC uh, for providing this amazing uh, environment um, that we've been able to work from and to our players um, for, you know, just the sacrifice, uh, the toughness and the discipline that they've showed since March to get to this point. Uh, and I know their excitement as well as our staff excitement uh, to get going. You know, we've had a good week uh, uh, this week and really two good weeks uh, of OTAs. Uh, yesterday was our last day of OTAs, really important time for us uh, as far as implementing systems. Uh, you know, meetings are great, <laughs> but uh, it does not substitute for going out there and being able to rep physically. Uh, it, it, offense and defense and special team systems. Uh, and now we enter training camp, and this is going to be a really important time for us these next four weeks because this is the first time we will actually go against each other. You know, so uh, to be able to not only implement those systems, but now um, to uh, really engage and, and work against uh, an, an opponent on the other side is obviously a progression that has to happen to have success uh, in a season. So we're looking forward to it. Can't waste a second. Uh, these, four, these four weeks are really, really important to us. So uh, like Tim said, uh, we've got Keaton and Talanoa here. Um, uh, I hope this format is sufficient for you and again will be accessible for you as much as humanly possible uh, with our coaches and our players. So with that, yeah, we'll answer any questions that you have. And again, uh, we'll, we'll uh, ask you to raise your hand uh, like Ryan Karchi did. So uh, Ryan, I see uh, we'll give you the first question here and uh, Adam, you're next up. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey Clay, thanks again for doing this. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned Maneer McLean being suspended from, from team activities. Why mm -hmm. is that exactly? 
Uh, right now he's on our team roster. He's suspended from team activities. And as you know, you've been with us, Ryan. I never can discuss a student issue. Any timeline on when a decision, like in terms of how long he'll be suspended, will be? No. Or? Okay, Adam. Uh, Clay, over the summer, you mentioned still keeping uh, the quarterback competition open with, um, is that still the plan? And if that's the plan, do you plan on mixing up who gets snaps with the first team and second teams? Adam, say that one more time, buddy. I, I lost you there for a second. Uh, over the summer, you mentioned trying to still keep the quarterback competition open. If that's the case, do you plan on having people uh, switching up which quarterback works with the first and second teams during practice? Well, obviously, you prepare each quarterback for his opportunity to go into a game. And in the situation we're in, we, we've got Keaton Slovis here. Uh, he is the starting quarterback. Uh, but we prepare each and every kid because um, you never know. I mean, you, th you, re you remind yourself last year of Matt Fink coming into a UK Utah game on the third play of the game and having to go win that game. Um, you, you think about, I think about Arizona State, and you think about the third quarter when Keaton had to go out and a 72-yard drive that that I think we had to have that set up a two-score lead in that game with Matt leading it. So um, are there situations uh, where guys go in with the first team? Yes, definitely, um, just to produce a chemistry and, and produce uh, everybody throws to everybody so you can have that chemistry. And that's a lot of our drill work, and I know you're not going to get to see that. That, but there's five quarterbacks throwing at one time uh, as as five skill players go out, you know, so they're all working with the ones. Uh, but Ke Keaton is our quarterback. Uh, and uh, but we, we we prepare each and every kid uh, for his opportunity uh, to, to play and, and, to, and to be ready. So appreciate the question, Adam. Okay, uh, we'll go to Antonio next. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, that we do have Keaton and Talano on, and they're available for questions at any time. Go ahead, Antonio. Hey, Clay, since you guys have the 9 a.m. kickoff to start the season, are you guys going to be practicing in the early mornings at all during training camp? Uh, yeah, so we'll actually, as we you know, enter game, we, we are in school. That's the difference here, uh, Antonio, to be honest with you. you know, usually you have an unlimited amount of time um, during a training camp because it's over the summer. But now we're on a 20-hour care a week. Uh, work week. So uh, we, we have, and we have to work around school, you know, so our window is two to six, uh, is two to six. That's our window of opportunity. As we draw closer to the game, we are going to do some things early morning uh, to, to be allow us to, uh, to be allow us to get them acclimated, uh, as well as take some opportunities on weekends uh, to be able to get some work, uh, uh, not only at the time we're going to play in that opening game, but also to be in the Coliseum uh, at that particular time, just so you know how it is. Uh, sometimes that sun's, uh, sun's in a different place than you're used to, or, or sometimes it's not out at all <laughs> in our case, uh, playing at night in, the, in prime time a lot. So it'll be a little bit different, and we want to be able to give the guys that experience. So uh, we will be having some opportunities to work in the morning uh, when available and not interfering with class, but also doing it in the Coliseum where they can get acclimated to uh, that beautiful facility at that time of day. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, Shotgun, you're up. Hey, Clay, do you have concerns uh, with depth issues now at linebacker and offensive line? You know, you get one back on the offensive line but lose two seniors, and then obviously with Solo and, 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 um, and Jordan mm -hmm. being out at linebacker, what's kind of the plan there to fill in with them? Yeah, good question, Shotgun. Uh, from a linebacker standpoint, we, we, entered, uh, we, we entered the fall – uh, looking pretty good. Uh, and when you lose a, a quality of a player like a Jordan Iosef and, and was extremely excited uh, about Solo, and really pr uh, pretty heartbroken over it because I know the amount of work that he's put in uh, to um, to have the chance to um, have his foot well, was feeling good, uh, and, and now has a knee. Um, you know, th that, that takes away from your depth. I, I, there's still some really, really quality players I think of uh, I think of EA, I think of Raylan. Uh, you think of those guys, uh, a Tua CV, a Kanai. Um, you, you, we've got, we have men there, 
Um, but, you know, when you talk about the quality, not only on defense, but also special teams of a solo that could have helped out a uh, Jordan Iosefa, um, those are losses. And those are losses that are going to provide a, an opportunity for other people to, to step up. Um, from an offensive line standpoint, um, I, I think the, the addition of getting Elijah Vera Tucker, obviously, um, that, that's a big thing. Um, it provides us a guy that has um, experience um, on that left side um, with a right-handed with a right-handed quarterback. Um, uh, and I, as we have said as a staff and, and have talked about as a staff, it's really going to be important for us to grow this team from the bottom up. Um, not only because of injuries, but because of all of a sudden you can have a positive test and and uh, that next guy is up like that. You know, so for us, it, it's even those six freshmen that 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 we signed last year. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to train them like they're getting ready to go start a game because they they could. You know, so um, when you look at some of the experience uh, on the on the ones, uh, you know, when you look at Elijah Barry Tucker and Jalen McKenzie, Andrew Voorhees, Brett Nealon, uh, uh, Liam Jimmins, they've all had that they've all had that experience, and now it's going to be a, a great opportunity for us. Others um, uh, like Justin Dietrich and um, uh, and and Liam and the ability for um, some of these young rookies to come in and help us, uh, uh, Jason, uh, to be able to come in and help us. So we'll uh, we'll have to grow them extremely fast. I'm very confident in our older guys because I've watched them play, but we're going to have to grow the bottom uh, up. It's a good question, Shaka. Uh, Ryan Young, your turn. You're on mute, Ryan. Hi, Clay. Can you shed can you shed more uh, insight into what happened with Jordan and how did he handle that after everything he went through last year? And you expect him to try and come back next season? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I you know uh, he was progressing nicely, but um, uh, has he, some scar tissue. He's going to have a scope um, to be able to clean up some things, and uh, and that's it takes time to get that back. And if, if we were playing a, a four or five month season, you probably would have that opportunity, but we want, he, he's got one year and, and we want him to be able to have the best experience possible for him. Um, and he's been a team captain here. He's been a leader here. He continues to be that each and every day. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get that thing exactly right uh, for him. So in his last year, he can have the best experience possible. And then two other guys, uh, how are Brew McCoy and Marquis Step looking? Uh, looking good. You know, Brew was actually um, uh, full speed yesterday and uh, really looked good. Um, and uh, um, nursing a little bit of a hamstring, uh, but uh, has really, we've taken the last couple of weeks and I think have gotten him to a point where he really feels confident in it. Looked really good yesterday. Um, Marquis uh, looked good yesterday uh, and uh, uh, heck, he walked into the building with me or <laughs> this morning, early this morning, uh, ready to, uh, he's really being proactive on keeping his body right and uh, um, uh, looked good. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching him in camp, Ryan, and, and I'll be able to get, as you know how it is, is back. They look good running forward, but as soon as you got to see a move lateral and, and, and be able to do some things in team periods and, and see where it's at. But from our initial impression, he, he looks uh, very healthy. Okay, we're going to skip to uh, Taylor Mills. Taylor, you're up. Hi, thank you. This is for Talanoa. Um, what has it been like working with Todd Orlando these past couple months, and what are you expecting with him today at practice? Uh, it's been great. You know, we've definitely put a whole new system in, and we're trying to learn as much as we can. And like, as a player, you're trying to just be a sponge. You're trying to absorb everything and uh, take it and run with it. I think he just preaches run and hit as much as possible, and we love it. And so... Uh, I wouldn't expect anything else other than energy today on the first day. Okay, thanks, Talanoa. Let's uh, let's jump to Mark Culkin. Unmute. Yep. Good morning, guys. Um, question for each of you, actually. You guys have been had the, you've had the opportunity to watch some football games these last few weeks. Uh, what are some of your takeaways that you're writing some notes down, saying let's make sure we don't do this or let's make sure we do that? Mark, is that to the players, the question? Uh, coach and players, I'm sorry. Whoever wants to answer. Yeah, I can start us off. Uh, um, 
you know, it, the one thing I think we're all students of the game and um, watching uh, watching other teams play what has been evident uh, uh, has been um, how important penalties can hurt you, how important turnovers can hurt you, uh, the sense of urgency that you got to have in both, as well as some situational mastery uh, things that have turned up in, in games. Uh, you know, um, one I, I wrote down from last week, just watching a couple games was um, just how important it is the hit on the quarterback uh, for safeties, linebackers, D linemen of that target uh, being from shoulder to torso uh, and how small a window that you have and you have to really work that. I, I, I saw two young men uh, be uh, disqualified from the game uh, that really tried to move their head out of the way but because they hit them above the shoulder, the two helmets nicked each other, tried to do his best job. But um, but it's those are the type of things that really keep you up at night as a coach after watching is, uh, one, teaching the situational mastery over these next four weeks, especially the young players, and then the sense of urgency of ball security uh, as well as penalties. And Graham's done a great job in these OTAs. I mean, every day at the end of practice, <laughs> he, he's made it a, a point of emphasis to – uh, to uh, be able to go through our bar security uh, drills uh, with, with our skill players. So those are three things that stand out to me. Keaton, uh, you want to add anything to that, what you've observed and uh, what, it's, what it's been like watching uh, football the past few weeks? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, offensively, I mean, there's, there's always some things that you, you keep in mind um, generally, but I think specifically with how the games are being played right now, um, snap count, is going to be a big, big, uh, big deal without the crowd noise. It's going to be a lot louder, and that's something that, you know, myself and really the center have to, you know, improve upon and hopefully be able to draw a few penalties. And there's some other things, but I think that's the main thing I've kind of noticed. And, Thank you. Go ahead, Talon. Uh, I was just saying. Uh, I think the biggest thing I noticed is kind of the lack. You know, we got to work on, especially is tackling. I think coming off of a period of not a lot of contact. Uh, practices and everything that's coming on with COVID and situa the situations, we got to we gotta dial in on that as, as fast as possible and be able to uh, make our skills as best as best as need when it comes down to it in the game. Uh, you know, learning from Coach Niver uh, in the defense as much as possible, I think he's really preached putting us, putting ourselves in those situations. So when you're watching a game, you know, utilizing your formations and seeing the formations and making a call that like if, like if we were playing the game. So, cause you see, you see the time and, and the time running down and okay, are you, uh, what kind of uh, formations they're going to put out there and what we can do to uh, best make a play. So having those tools that our coaches kind of implemented uh, as we watch the games, it, it makes it more interesting and uh, makes it, you know, just better environment for us to learn. Thanks, Tal. Uh, Ryan Karchi, you're up again. Unmute. Yep. Uh, Clay, I know you've talked about how much Solomon has been through uh, these last couple years with injuries. Uh, was his knee injury related to the foot at all? No. Okay. No, totally, to, totally, totally separate incident. And his foot is fine, like otherwise. But uh, that's what makes it so heartbreaking because it's the best he's felt in in two years, and was uh, really um, feeling really good uh, with his foot, and uh, uh, just totally separate incident and heartbroken for him. Um, I'll Trojan say a prayer. He's actually in in surgery today, and uh, I'll be able to give you more of an update um, uh, later in the week. And I know Drake Jackson uh, was somewhat changing positions uh, to fit into mm -hmm. Orlando's defense. What have you generally seen from him this offseason, and what's his situation right now heading into this? Season? Yeah, you know, right now he's nursing a little bit of a hamstring that, that we're going through, but he's he's been able to do the majority of the implementation of, of the uh, system. The one thing that you see with Drake, and, and, and you forget how athletic the guy is, um, because he has the capability. I think that's why he's going to be such a great NFL prospect. He has the capability of being a stand-up defensive end in a, in a four-down scheme, uh, but has the athleticism as an outside linebacker in a 3-4 scheme to either pressure off the edge or drop into coverage. And um, he, he's just 
a unique talent uh, as that to be that big a man, that strong a man, that explosive a man, but really that athletic a person uh, that can either be that defensive end or outside linebacker body, uh, which really fits um, uh, Todd's uh, Todd's scheme uh, of bouncing in and out of those two fronts. And so uh, if you were ever to draw one up, what one needs to look like in, in Coach Orlando's scheme, that would be it, you know. And uh, so he's looked really good. Um, you know, our biggest biggest thing now is just making sure he's healthy going into the first game and, and uh, getting a little bit of a tight hamstring right uh, over the next couple of weeks. Is the thought to just take it easy with him, especially through this first part of camp? Um, I, you know, the early initial uh, this next um, week or so is going to be very limited for him um, and uh, really trying to get that thing where he feels good. You know, he is a, he, he's a very tough kid, likes to battle through things. And uh, um, but uh, we're going to make sure that he's ready to go come game one. Adam Grossbard, you're up again. Play. We talked on Wednesday just about the dividing the team between, you know, simultaneous practices. Have you thought about how you're going to be dividing personnel and coaches between the two practice fields? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually have four training areas, uh, if you can imagine that. And um, uh, we, uh, you know, using the personnel that we have, we will be divvying up the coaches per training area. Um, and um, uh, it, it, it was a long meeting yesterday, organizationally. We're actually walking through here at 10 a.m. Uh, as a staff uh, ourselves going out there prior to practice so everything is organized for the kids uh, in the right way. Uh, you know, and we're having to implement everybody uh, as far as um, – as far as uh, being able to run a practice, you know, you even, you even forget about that. There's the student managers aren't here uh, that usually you have uh, 12 to 14 student managers that help <laughs> during practice too. So it's no job too small for anybody <laughs> right, right now, uh, especially uh, having to create a safe atmosphere of keeping only so many kids in one training area. Um, so, uh, I think we've got an organized, a uh, very organized practice. It's something that we've been working through over the past couple of weeks um, that we really finalized uh, exactly the way we want it yesterday and divvied up the responsibilities. We're going to walk through it uh, ourselves this morning and then take it to the field. And, uh, you know, obviously it's our first time in this, in this era. Uh, and and there'll have to be adjustments, and uh, it won't be perfect. Uh, but uh, we'll see uh, what our strengths were coming out of practice and where we need to adjust. But obviously, there's some logistics that go behind it, Adam. How do you divide up the players in that situation? Like, is it based off of you know units mm -hmm. or strings or? Yeah, you, usually that what you ended up doing is it's based on the uh, depth chart wise of of your ones and twos in, in a certain area, your threes in a certain area. Um, the biggest thing for us as we took away was the priority of training everybody. Um, and I think this could be a strength of this, uh, especially when you're dealing with a pandemic and testing and you may lose some kids due to contracting a virus, um, is that we have to prepare everybody, uh, whether it's injury, whether it's a positive test. Um, and I think that's one of the silver linings in this uh, is the ability to train the entire team from bottom to top. Um, and so we are divvying up by, uh, by strings um, and, uh, and using every inch of grass that we have uh, on this campus right now to be able to get it done. Go to Ryan Young. Going back to Drake Jackson, looking at the roster, it looks like he's down about 20 pounds in the last season. Can you talk about that transformation and, and what uh, prompted it? Yeah, you know, he, he is around 245, 250 right now, uh, looking really, really good. Um, and it, it's something that uh, his explosiveness is what was important to him uh, and, the, the, and the position um, and the position of need uh, that he was in. Uh, he's a perfect fit in Coach Orlando's defense, and I, I think he's really going to give him an opportunity to do some amazing things, um, not only for our team, but for his future. Um, uh, because I do see him as the guy that uh, is can be a four-down defensive end or a three-four outside linebacker rushing, um, and so 
uh, you know, to be able to see how explosive he is at this weight and how comfortable he is at, at this weight, at this weight as an edge player, um, has been neat to see and need to see. And he's, he's extremely comfortable with it, which is the biggest thing. Then I'm curious about the NCAA eligibility relief. Uh, it was given for this year. How does that impact big picture roster management moving forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you know, most of the things that came out actually help universities uh, because the when you look at the 21 class and, and being able to to be able to sign a full boat, um, we're in that situation. We're going to be able to sign a full class. Um, and so um, the the regulations that came out from the NCA really, I think, not only benefited your current team, but it benefited the 21 class also uh, as far as providing them opportunities. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Eric McKinney. Uh, we have a couple more questions after that, and then we're going to have to cut it off time-wise. So, uh, Eric, go ahead. Uh, Keaton, year, year two under Graham Harrell, where do you see, I guess, maybe the most uh, progress possible for the offense? Um, I think, you know, I don't know if, you know, obviously we'll execute better. So I don't know if how much, but other than that, I don't know how much um, outsiders really understand the differences. Um, but I think from my perspective or from the offense's perspective, you know, we just really, really throw in a lot of stuff that um, are kind of more nuances to, to what we did last year. And, and more uh, variations to what we did last year. So we can run so many different things now from so many different looks. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm just really excited for, to see what we can do week to week throughout the year. Uh, shotgun? Clay, going back to the offensive line, uh, obviously you've got some guys that are pretty versatile there. Uh, do you know how you're going to kind of start out? I know you may move some guys around as camp mm -hmm. progresses, but guys like yeah. Liam Jimmins, Voorhees, McKenzie, who mm -hmm. are going to start in tackle, where are they kind of starting at? Yeah, so I'll be honest with you, Chuck. If, the way we've always approached it, we've, we've signed, we sign a lot of tackle bodies. And, and so our job is to get the best five on the field. And, and – for us and where they are most comfortable. Um, and so we're going to be trying a variety of different um, positions for each guy. And, and I think you're going to have to double train guys uh, because of injury and because of what we're going through with this pandemic. Um, I, we truly believe you're going to have to train an Elijah Vera Tucker at left guard and left tackle. You're going to have to train a Jalen McKenzie, not only for left side, but, but right side. You're going to have to train Andrew Voorhees at both guard positions, uh, Justin Dietrich at center and, and guard. Um, so, uh, and, and Liam Jimmins, you mentioned uh, both guard and tackle, you know, and so we're fortunate because our philosophy is to sign. If, you, if you've seen the majority of our guys, with the exception of the center position, they play tackle in high school. Um, and now we're going to have to really take these next four weeks and be able to double train and find the top five and what is their most comfortable position. So I can't definitely give you an answer right now of where, where it's going to line up, but we are, uh, I will give you this insight that we are going to double train guys to see what the best setup for us is uh, going into game one. And we hope that benefits us if we do have change injuries or positive tests. Uh, that uh, we can make a, a, a adaptation in a heartbeat. We have, uh, one final from Ryan Karchi and then Adam. One quick ones, please. I believe you guys were starting the Quidel testing uh, today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how how will that whole situation work, just in general, detail wise, and and for the players? Uh, you know, what has that, that testing situation been like or how smooth has it all been, especially with the, with the new testing? Well, one, I have to thank the USC medical staff um, because our, our medical team on campus is actually running this. I'm actually taking my third one uh, today. I, uh, uh, I was the guinea pig back on, on Wednesday <laughs> uh, to their staff. And, and so, um, you know, we are not only taking the Quidel test, but we are taking the colors test for the university too. Um, and, and we're able to, um, as, a, as a team, really have a great flow. It's set up for us where you come in, uh, be able to give your information, your ID, 
uh, test in and out and it, it's we're able to it takes probably about an hour half two hours to to our estimation to be able to get the entire team through and as we know with the Quidel testing the results are coming back in 15 to 30 minutes at the most so before you even step on uh, practice field you know exactly where you're at so I've actually been through two test runs of it uh, I thought it was extremely efficient um, it's done by our, our medical uh, staff on campus, our health center, uh, who are trained professionals. And um, uh, it provides me a very uh, uh, sense of security and comfort uh, in knowing that uh, not only are we being tested every day by Quidel, but we're also backing it up with our colors test that's done by all students. So uh, and that's one of the reasons, Ryan, I was talking earlier uh, about just I appreciate the players and our staff um, for uh, the sacrifice and the toughness and the things they're, they're doing uh, to ensure that we're the safest possible. Um, you know, when you're, ha when you're doing six to nine tests a week, um, that's a lot, you know, but uh, I appreciate them uh, for the responsibility and understanding that it's a privilege for what we're getting to do and there's a responsibility of doing this so this is a daily thing we're doing and um and i know the players appreciate it and our staff appreciates it key or talano one of you want to quickly uh talk about how the process has gone for you guys uh yeah it's uh it's been a it's been a blessing honestly being able to have this uh this um uh, Testing is just a way for us to get on the field and for us to be, we, like we said, me and Keith, I don't know if you guys knew this a while back, we, we, we said it from the jump, we really just want to play. At the end of the day, we want to, we want to play ball and, and be able to be around each other and uh, we got to do whatever whatever it takes. And if, it, if it's testing once a day, twice a day, I, I know a lot of guys on our team are, are more than welcome just to, just to be able to play ball, so. Good, thank you. Uh, let's go to Adam Grossbar for our last question. Uh, Keaton Talanoa, I know it's been a long time since you've been able to have, you know, a large portion of the team together as one. Like, what is just the excitement level of, you know, getting back into a practice environment with so many of your teammates after, you know, so much isolation? I'll start off. Um, I mean, it's just been exciting this past week being back in the locker room with the guys. Um, it's been a long time. We've been in such small been those small groups for a long time and even though it's just been with the offense really um it's just exciting to be back out there and see what our offense looks like with 11 guys out there um so i think it'll be a similar feeling to get the defense back out there to get be able to, to finally uh compete against each other and um take a look at our offense against uh something other than air so again i'm sure tom know feel a similar way but i'm just really excited to get back out there and see everyone again and compete uh, yeah, very excited. Just just like I said, I think it's pretty cool because it's going to be a lot of new faces, uh, especially for as a defensive defense player. You know, we got a lot of offensive line coming in, so we get to see a lot of new guys and meet a lot of your new brothers. So we're just trying to take them in and do our best so we can uh, continue to build this brotherhood. Uh, and like we said, we're just trying to play ball and do our best. So. Okay, uh, Clay, Talanoa, Keaton, thank you very much for spending the time with us. Uh, Media, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, you should all have our interview schedule. Our next one uh, will be with Clay uh, Monday morning at 7.30, uh, Clay only. And so we, uh, we look forward to seeing you all there. Have a great weekend and, and coach and players uh, have great practices. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Take care, stay safe. Have a great weekend.